Thank you, Edward. And thank you all for rejoining us for the last session of day one of the Festival of Dam. I'm Jared Jengris, Managing Director and Lead Dam Analyst at the Real Story Group. And it's my pleasure to welcome you into the session around navigating key integrations at a fast growing global brand from Corey Davis from Lucid Motors is going to take us into talking about how he approaches his role as a dam manager to to do things like make sure that the dam isn't in a vacuum it's truly integrated with other systems it's 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 been onboarded in a in a logical way that that people are actually going to use the system and the user experience is is designed in a way that it helps not hinders people do their job as it relates to managing assets through a life cycle so corey welcome thank you for joining us and sharing your your experiences we'll uh send it over to you and uh, to, to, sh to share your slides. But I, I just want to remind everyone as Corey is presenting, feel free to just submit your uh, any questions that you have or comments that you have in the in the Hubelo Q&A panel and uh, we'll make sure to get to as many as we can at the end. Thank you and Corey, over to you. Thank you so much, Jared. I really appreciate the introduction. Hello everyone, good day. Uh, my name is Corey Davis. And I'm here today to talk to you about getting behind the wheel, leveraging DAM and navigating key integrations at a fast growing global brand. Um, I just, I am the digital asset manager for the brand team at Lucid Motors. A little bit of background about myself. I am originally from Louisiana. I uh, did my undergraduate work in psychology at Southern University and a and College and my graduate studies at the Syracuse University Newhouse School of Public Communications, I studied photography. Over my career, I've had the fortune of working with a lot of uh, large global brands. Um, after completing my schooling at Syracuse, I moved to New York City to pursue my dreams of working in media and entertainment. Uh, my career prior to DAM was primarily in the roles of photo editor, photo producer, and staff photographer. Uh, being in these creative roles taught me a lot about working collaboratively with, with creative teams and managing the storage and distribution of files throughout an organization. Each of these roles prepared me for my roles in DAM and have prepared me to meet a lot of the challenges that we face in our daily world in DAM. I currently work at Lucid Motors, and Lucid Motors is a luxury EV company that in our own words, reimagines automotive space and creates an entirely new luxury class. I saw joining Lucid Motors as an extremely great opportunity because I'd never worked for a, a new brand who was introducing themselves to the market and really developing um, their brand voice. Uh, it was, I was thrilled to work with a company and to engineer and implement a dam that would help out in this point of the brand's development. Um, also a chance to work alongside the creative teams at Lucid Motors who make these amazing assets um, was a bonus. Um, their hard work and dedication uh, shows in every asset that they create. While I tapped into the company culture, a few key brand statements stood out to me. Um, this is one of them that's displayed here. Uh, we set out to create, sorry. We set out to create a car that elevates the human experience and transcends the perceived limitations of space, performance, and intelligence. A car that is intuitive, liberating, and designed for all the ways people get around. We plan to lead this new era of electric, of luxury electric by returning to the fundamentals of great design where every decision we make is in service to the individual because we are no longer bound by convention, you are free to define your own experience. When I read that statement, I knew that I wanted to apply those same principles to building our dam. Because our dam sits at the heart of our digital asset supply chain, I wanted to, it to be based on a user-centered design that boasted a Swiss army knife of features that were greater for the overall business. Another standout phrase to me that really helps to guide my decisions and to guide my uh, engineering of the dam is at Lucid, we believe in the dream ahead. Our relentless focus 
on innovation, luxury, and sustainability moves us toward a future where you no longer have to choose between doing great things and doing the right thing. I learned early in my damn journey that damn is not a one size fits all solution. Systems vary by the needs and goals of the company, and so do platforms and technology. I've worked on custom dams, network servers, and cloud sharing systems. So I was full of ideas and full of different solutions uh, that I've already had to, you know, to imply, to implore, sorry, um, along my, my journey. Our department senior leadership had the vision to secure a dam for our team early on before I even joined Lucid Motors. So it was great that a platform already existed and I didn't have to do the, the back and forth and all of the different research that it takes to actually find a dam. I believed in the platform that the senior leadership had bought because I had some experience working with it. And I knew that it was a customizable tool that would be able to be leveraged in so many different ways in the future. Uh, a couple of my teammates, along with our senior sponsorship, worked with a dam vendor to define a list of metadata properties as a part of the metadata schema. It was quite a robust list, but also a very robust start. The, the bonus of having senior leadership and members of the team support that vision for the dam was encouraging. And it not only lends to the credibility of the dam, but it's also a great way to be able to push forward for those enhancements and those, um, those different extensions so that we're able to customize our dam to fit the overall business needs. Of course, my first order of business was to get to the dam and to get it up and running ASAP. There was a huge archive of assets being created um, that were created, I'm sorry, and there were a lot of assets that were being created at the time. And our team wanted to leverage the dam as a vehicle to drive those assets to the multiple channels where they were being used. When I got our dam to a really good place, I was able to go to all of the different uh, key stakeholders. And I went on a dam tour to meet all of these different stakeholders and try to assess their unique needs and requirements for digital asset management. Introducing them to the dam opened the door for valuable discoveries uh, where I was able to find what they needed to work with assets, how they leveraged the dam and you know how we could actually mature our dam to be a better solution for the company overall. I took copious notes during this time as I talked to these people and it helped me to remember key points as I was seeking out new technologies to expand our dam. And during this time, there was uh, a lot of, there were a lot of projects in the, in the pipeline and I was working on multiple um, platforms with different creatives. And so it gave me a chance to really learn the language and to really get a grasp for how the company used their digital assets. In the eight months that I've been at Lucid Motors, we've put seven products on the market and we have localized in three countries. Let's talk about a fast growing global brand. Um, and these numbers are increasing as we have more stuff in the pipeline. When I started at Lucid Motors, we had around 20 to 25 users and roughly 100 assets that were living in our dam. Today, we have over 300 users and more than 10,000 assets. It's growing every day and our team is constantly working in um, creating new and valuable assets that we're pushing out to all of our different content channels and markets. When it comes to integrations, uh, after migrating different large portions of assets to the dam, I started to plan ways to integrate our dam into the wider asset ecosystem. I wanted to introduce tools that would streamline our workflows by connecting the dam to creative tools used not only by our team, but other dam users within the company. There was very little adoption at the time, and I knew that adding extra tasks 
for the sake of testing technology that was, you know, while everyone was still adjusting to the dam wasn't ideal. But I was able to find members of my team and others who were enthusiastic to be testers. And that was a fantastic benefit for me. I learned early on that I definitely put the cart before the horse. The team had been formally introduced to the dam uh, just recently, and there was no real adoption. So there was no real desire to have integrations or to further extend the dam at the time. I needed to go back to the basics and really get my team on board and find out what their true needs were before integrating. My considerations were, what are our immediate needs? Um, I started to think more critically and to be more inclusive in my process. Uh, initially, I selected tools based on what I'd seen and what I thought were good solutions, but I know that I needed to invite, I learned that I needed to invite my team to the process and I needed to find a way to get them involved in choosing these tools. Some considerations while looking into possible add-ons were, you know, no bells and whistles or complicated tools. Uh, we needed the essentials that would have immediate impact and relieve major pain points. We needed something that was easy to use and how we would facilitate trainings and get people onboarded was a major consideration. Uh, Long-term, reducing inefficiencies within the assets, supply chain, and automating workflows were possible. Also, our assets had multiple reliable and resourceful vehicles to get to the multiple distribution points. And that's what we wanted to empower. That's what we wanted to empower our dam with. Integration opportunities. During the creative process, there are numerous opportunities for integration. During the upstream process, this is a way to enter, this is a time to introduce standards and guidelines to your different teams so that they are able to create on brand content and able to consistently deliver that branded message every time. Uh, part of our creative process is establishing brand guidelines and providing essential brand elements without the need for full dam access. There may be a future business need sometime to, to facilitate approvals on platform or to leverage the dam to enrich assets for global distribution when repurposing assets and extending their life cycle. These are our areas of interest during this stage. And in the downstream process, um, you know, this is honestly probably the area where I wanted to leverage the dam more. Uh, rights management specifically, I wanted to be able to connect it to the systems to store some accurate uh, administrative and preservation metadata and add them to our assets. Um, and uh, we needed to figure out were there ways to automate importing that metadata and um, in terms of localizing, providing workflow tools and templates for our global partners to create on-brand content and facilitate approvals on the dam, expiring assets by setting an archive date or making users aware of expiration dates uh, automatically, you know, eliminating, eliminating those workflow steps for the dam manager so that, you know, I have more time to focus on growing our dam and further integrating it with systems that are going to make us really stand out uh, on the global market. So after I evaluated all of these different needs with our teams, we decided to go for our brand guidelines um, for localizations and partnerships to provide those parameters around working with our assets we decided to go with the tool that will provide asset variants for us that would not eat up our existing storage space, but will provide users with an ability, the ability to resize and crop assets uh, without actually stepping outside of our brand guidelines. We would be able to set those parameters and workflow automation, connecting our creative tools to our dam so that when reversioning assets and pushing new assets out into the uh, ecosystem, 
we're able to do so seamlessly straight from the computer and there are no extra workflow steps involved. Connectivity. Are we gonna be able to connect our dam to our e-commerce sites, to our social media channels and to our marketing tools? Our goals. Goals define our purpose and help us to grow to achieve our objectives. In order for our dam to mature in a beneficial way, goals needed to be established for each of the major touch points for the dam. What are my goals for these advancements? Why do I advise goal setting and how do we leverage analytics and metrics to help gain insights in the future? For the content intake process, being able to streamline and simplify workflows will help speed to market and empower creatives with more time to create. Establishing reliable and scalable connections between our dam and our content creation tools and our other enterprise tools seamlessly and securely. And leveraging variable analytics to spot trends in asset usage, inefficiencies in asset management, and to measure our return of investment. Content enrichment, increasing security and giving and providing flexibility of use and accessibility to assets so that only users who need the uh, access to certain assets have them, but how can we automate that? How can we set that up um, at the beginning of the creation process? or once the assets actually arrive in the dam. Adding value by reducing human error and metadata variance when adding metadata by pulling the, these values from secure and trusted reliable sources um, and saving time by eliminating manual steps in the process. Content distribution. When distributing contents, I'd like to make sure that all the proper rights and permissions are applied. Increasing adoption and increasing engagement adds value to the dam by establishing, as a, by establishing it as a valued and useful company resource. Leveraging repurposed assets can extend the life of your assets, increase and to help measure your return of investment. The decision-making process. During this process, I wanted to provide context and guidelines for our team so that we'd receive the maximum value of the time spent looking into these different integrations and sitting through all of the different product meetings and demos. And in order to make a decision, we needed to be objective and decisive. After examining the options, we were able to narrow our options down to a short list by taking time effort and overall value into consideration. How long would it take to cohesively merge this technology into our dam? How much training or regular maintenance would be involved? What is our capacity to take on this effort? And how will this enhancement make our lives better? In order to find maximum value, it was also important to have different points of view from different lines of business to assess needs. Sorry, I don't know if you can. Prior to bringing my, sorry, I got a little alert in the middle of my screen here. I don't know if you can see that, but um, I want to go back to my keynote presentation, apologies. Yeah, we're all good, Corey. Okay, thank you so much, sorry about that. So, kind of sitting in the middle of my screen there. I just wanted to make sure you didn't see it. Um, in order to find maximum value in the new technology, I engaged with the users. And um, like I said, it was important to have different points of view. Prior to bringing my power users into bake-off presentations, I gave them a rundown of the technology, including information briefs, videos, and supporting info provided by the vendor. Once the presentation once in the presentations, the users were encouraged to ask valuable questions related to our workflows and practices. 
This would nudge the vendor to speak on features and solutions that could be useful in our day-to-day -day work environment, really customizing the meeting and information gathering sessions to our specific needs, as opposed to what our vendor wanted to present to us. Considering both time, both the time that it would take to fully integrate this technology and how complex or simple it would be to use once the dam was connected into our dam, um, we were able to develop some metrics to rate and to score uh, all these different tools. And we did take into consideration that tools with too many bells and whistles can be off-putting to users if they're too complex and complicated to use. So we decided to steer clear of those. Other considerations. How would the integration fit into the organization as a whole? Where is its place in the big picture? So aside from the financial portion, how does it fit into the organization? Where is this integration going to benefit the larger plan for the dam? Will your solution fit your, fit your company's ways of working with assets? Is it a scenario fit? Will it check the most important boxes and offer enough flexibility to impact multiple creative scenarios and touch points? Technology is a fast moving machine. How much development is going to go into the tool? How has it matured since its inception? Will this integration mature well with your dam? Will the vendor be a good partner for this training and implementation phase of this uh, integration? Will they also provide quality tech support when you need it? How much is this tool worth to your team and organization? When considering funding our integrations, my thoughts are always on future technical enhancements and um, finding some measurable return of investments so that we can get buy-in for future enhancements. Will you need to continue to increase spending on this tool in order to see any value or benefits? How much does the purchase impact your potential future upgrades and integrations? Our decisions would also have a, an effect on these four major elements. And what does this do for us on the dam capability model? A great integration will help to set benchmarks and help us to define what improvement means for our dam over time. Data and time management, accessibility and partnerships are major considerations. And the four variables represented here are very important in to consider while selecting integrations for your dam. It's also important to weigh how much a lift implementing new tech will be. For the first integrations on the dam at Lucid, I'm working with software vendors to onboard and facilitate trainings with some of our power users. A robust training session with the tools developer or vendor will help to lay a solid foundation for our efforts and aid in a cohesive implementation. Steps in our implementation process include formalizing our new technology or making it official, defining the tool's purpose and deciding who is going to implement the new tool before introducing it to the wider team. My method is to allow power users to test the software and somewhat, I hate to say poke holes, but kind of poke holes in it to see, you know, does it really fit into our big picture and what ways can we leverage it beyond the initial um, intentions? Uh, and it also gives me a chance to troubleshoot and learn more about it from their perspectives and to prepare it for optimization. In the optimizing phase, the optimization phase, customizing and adjusting the tool for your team's needs uh, is super important. And that is why it's, I always like to let the power users test the technology so that I can know what parameters to place on it and kind of how, how granular we need to get uh, straight out of the box. Um, and the training portion of it is working with the vendor to host training sessions and develop a training plan, creating training documents and videos to help onboard users as the tools become an integral part of the process. 
And my final thoughts, um, you know, this has been an interesting process, definitely because uh, you don't know what you don't know. And I really thought that I knew a lot when it came to just recommending tools that the team could use, but actually taking the time to work with my team and invite them to the process has taught me more about the integration process at Lucid than anything. Um, I'm a car enthusiast at best, and so I don't know a, a lot about the automotive industry or really how they operate in terms of the market before coming to Lucid. And now I feel like I'm getting a really good grasp of um, of the way things work within the automotive industry and their, the creative teams in the automotive industry. And um, yeah, I, I my final thoughts here are to always include your team in the process, always make sure that you're getting buy-in and that you're having those conversations that make you think critically about the technology. Don't rush, uh, always make a plan and take your time to actually vet uh, things carefully and to ask all of the most uh, crucial questions and to be thorough, don't overdo it. Uh, you don't wanna over-engineer because it's really hard to dial things back once you do. No solution is perfect. So don't put pressure on yourself or the vendor to give you the perfect solution. Uh, nothing is going to be perfect. Even if you work with it for uh, several years, you will find uh, pain points that you'll want to uh, address in other ways. And integration is the state of being and not a status of being. So as we integrate our dam, know that there will be future opportunities for integration. So again, trust the process, work well with your teams, and you know, always seek knowledge and information when doing these projects. Again, I invite you to stay in touch with me. Um, my contact information is here, and you can scan this QR code to uh, join me on LinkedIn. I uh, would love to hear from anyone out there. And uh, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, Jared, thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, Corey, thank you so much. This is, this is great. And uh, I can honestly say as someone who's preached for many years about the, the importance of applying design thinking to everything from selecting the technology to the implementation of the technology to the ongoing care and feeding of the technology, it's really fun for me to sit back and see how you apply those, those exact design thinking principles at a company that is where design thinking is truly ingrained in everything that you do. So that's, that's really, really cool to see. Um, we don't have a ton of questions in, in the uh, Q&A today. I think everything you said hit, hit, uh, hit spot on. But, uh, you, you know, if anyone does have any questions, just contact Corey, go to link, LinkedIn, LinkedIn and link in with him and uh, keep that conversation going. But Corey, great stuff. Thank you so much for, for sharing with so us much, all today. I appreciate it. And Thank you so much, Jared. You got it. And with that, I think that that concludes day one of the Festival of Dam. Uh, so thank you all so much for, for coming. And I encourage you to join us back tomorrow when we restart this thing again. At, I think the doors will be opening at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the first sessions will begin at 11, promptly at 11. So uh, have a good night, everyone. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.